Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is a fugitive run. So I know that there is an update on the horizon. I am betting, I'm hoping, I am praying that it's just the replays. Because if there's any new changes to the game, I'm, I'm gonna have to ruin this and uh, basically end the fugitive run. But we can't wait forever for the update because we never know when it's coming. So with that all being said, let's jump into a fugitive run in No Man's Sky. So if you don't know about a fugitive run or if you've uh, not played or heard about it, essentially you have to start a brand new save from the beginning. We're setting it to permadeath and not just permadeath. Like this is hard by itself. We are actually going even harder than permadeath. We're going to extreme difficulty. So there's some things that are still set to standard, uh, even on permadeath, we are going all the way. So yeah, right here, boom, expensive, harsh, challenging. Yeah, we're going all the way. And what we are gonna do is we're gonna lock in our difficulty, that way we cannot change it. And we are turning off tutorial missions. The reason why we do the tutorials turned off is that it gives you blueprints from the beginning. And in a fugitive run, you cannot talk to any normal aliens. You cannot visit any normal buildings, anything like that, because you're a fugitive on the run from the authorities. So you don't want to be caught. The only interactions we can have are with outlaws, other like pirates, other uh, fugitives, which means if you go to like a pirate or an outlaw system, you can talk to those aliens. If someone like one of the black market dealers, one of the black market traders lands, we can talk to them. But that's about it. We can go to like abandoned buildings. The rules are going to be down in the description if you want to know all the details. But essentially what we're trying to do is avoid all contact as much as possible and get to the center of the galaxy. So, oh, and without, you know, without interacting with other, uh, with other aliens and getting caught. So first things first, we need to get into a new ship because Part of the fugitive run is your beginning ship. The one they give you, this one right here. This one, the radiant pillar. This one is bugged. It's been marked. They know that this is my ship. So if I fly with it, they will catch me really fast. So we have to abandon it. We have to pretend like the authorities are looking for that one. We have to find our own different ship. And we can either do that by saving up enough money to buy one. Like if one of those black market traders lands, we might be able to buy their ship from them. Or if we find a broken one, we can fix it up and leave. But we cannot use our starting ship. That is not possible without being caught. So I I really like doing these kind of runs in No Man's Sky because it's not the normal run. It's a very difficult thing to do. So it's really, really hard knowing that if I die or anything happens to me, my save is erased because we are still on permadeath. We're just on a harder version of permadeath. And so you don't want to really mess up. You want to be careful, but I'm also torn because, you know, if I'm recording a video for you guys, I don't want it to be super boring either. So I, I like to be a little bit adventurous. Like, uh, for instance, the, uh, the abandoned buildings. We can go into abandoned buildings we can farm the eggs on the outside of an abandoned building. But if you've played No Man's Sky, you know that when you farm those eggs, those huge monsters come out of the ground and attack you. Now, the way to do that is to be very careful. You just, uh, you dig a hole underneath the, the eggs and then you can just farm them all day with no problem. However, that's very boring. At least I think it's boring. So I, gen I generally don't do that. I'll just say, eh, I'll just run it. And if I get murdered, then so be it. I run that risk, but it's more fun, more exciting when you don't have to, when you're not worried about, oh, I'm gonna get caught or whatever. I do a lot more jetpack boosting. So if you don't know what that is, doing this, you take damage if you fall too far. So I'll do that a lot. And uh, that's not a smart move. It's not, especially when you're on permadeath. Okay, so that's where our ship is over there. We don't want to go that way, so we're going to go north. And we're just going to look for, oh, buildings like that. But we have to avoid anything that's inhabited. So if it's like a, an observatory or like a trading outpost, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to go there because you'll get caught. And a lot of this is like, you know, it's, it's not part of the game. Like there's no, 
game over if I get caught. It's more of I'm playing a character. This is role playing in No Man's Sky. And I think that that's another part that makes it more fun because it's up to you. Like, if you're going and you just get fed up, you're like, dude, I've been going around for 10 hours trying to find a ship and it's just not working, you can bend the rules a little bit. So whenever, like, I bend the rules, like, if I, if I go 15, 20 hours and I cannot find a ship or, I you know, I don't have enough money or whatever, I will bend the rules and I'll have some kind of a payment. I'll be like, okay, I'll, I'll break a rule. However, because I broke the rule, I have to do this thing. Like if I, uh, if I break the rule and I buy a ship or whatever from a uh, trading outpost, then I have to go to another system, land on the, uh, you know, land on the ground and then abandon my ship and find another one because they're hunting that one down or something like that. You know, you can make it up as you go along and adjust the rules to keep it in more of the spirit of the rule, but not insanely difficult because it's all about having fun. At least to me, it's about having fun. And so there are rules there knowing that I can, I can adjust them if I need to. Let's see, there's no, nothing around here. So the thing to look for, if you're gonna look for a, uh, like a, a crashed ship is you wanna look for these, where is it at? I don't have any around me, huh? Oh God, okay, I don't have any broken machinery, huh? Well, you're gonna look for things called damaged machinery because damaged machinery is usually around a crashed ship. It won't mark the ship itself. It'll mark the machine around it. The debris, uh, you know, more or less. So here's the, okay, so this is nothing really. So sometimes you have a building that's just a save beacon. It's like, well, great, that doesn't help me at all. But we're next to a cave. This is really, really useful. So on the extreme difficulties, they don't sell you any of the basic building blocks. Like if you go to a, a trade terminal, they're not gonna give you any like ferrite dust or cobalt or anything like that. You know, and on top of that, we are a fugitive. So I cannot even go to a normal trading outpost. Like if I go to an outlaw system, I can go to the station because it's an outlaw station, but any normal system, you cannot go there because they'll, they'll call the cops. You know, they'll call the authorities immediately. Uh, so instead, what we have to do is we have to farm our own. And this is always, you know, these are good tips for like when you're first starting out in the game in general. When you start out on a planet, you, you, your uh, equipment is broken, your ship is broken. It's always a good idea to farm a lot of resources anyway, and you really want to farm inside of caves because as you can tell my hazard protection is now good to go because i'm covered i have a roof over my head and i'm farming materials that i'm going to use to make batteries with so you need cobalt and ferrite dust in order to make a battery to recharge your hazard protection your uh, environmental protections so that's why it's always good to come in here and do this and as a fugitive it it pays off the other thing you want to do is once you get your visor fixed once you install your visor, that way you can scan stuff like what I just did. You want to start scanning stuff, but specifically you want to scan the items that have double resources. And what I mean by that is, get over here. If I look at one of these, oh, maybe not. Maybe none of these have it. Oh, God. All right. If I look at like, uh, oh, not that one. Are you serious? None of it? There you go, right here. You see how it says unidentified material? ferrite dust so we know it gives us ferrite dust and it gives us something else because it says analyze if you scan this you'll get two resources instead of just one so if i scan this now i will get ferrite dust and sodium out of this whenever i destroy it whenever i mine it so that's always a benefit you get double resources now i'm gonna get mostly ferrite dust and i'll get a little bit of sodium because it's the secondary one they'll give you like one or two pieces of that thing However, one or two, it, it'll stack up after a while. If I, if I break up like 10 of those, that's 20 sodium, which, you know, so after a while, it will start adding up. And even if it doesn't look like, even if it looks like it's the same, look at that. This one gives me ferrite dust and oxygen. They're not. So two of similar looking plants or rocks or whatever might give you different resources. So definitely, definitely scan whatever you can. And... As a uh, as another bonus to that is you get money for scanning stuff. Now, as you upgrade your uh, your scanner, because right now we have 
just our scanner and that's it. Oh, and our scanner is broken. I need to fix this thing. All right. So we just have our visor. If I add upgrades to this or upgrades to my scanner, it will increase my money that I get. Right now, I'm just getting the basic level and the more upgrades I have, the more money I make. There we go. So we're looking for this, that little gear icon, because this damaged machinery is going to be near crashed ships. So that's why we're kind of uh, keeping our eye on those. That's my ship over there. We're going to avoid it because I don't want to get caught. Let's scan this animal. And we just made $1,000 just for scanning an animal. That's it. And I mean, the up, the better the upgrades you get, you can get up to like 500,000 for each scanned animal, which is crazy. And another reason to, well, wait a minute. We need to make one of those. I don't have any, uh, dang it. I don't have any of the nanotubes. So we need to make a terrain manipulator, which will let us dig into the ground. But I need carbon nanotubes and dihydrogen shelling. So another reason to come over here to this damaged machinery is next to every damaged machinery, there will be this thing, a buried technology module. Those are very, very valuable. So you want to pick those up, but you need to be able to get into the ground. I need to dig down in there. So therefore, I need to start collecting more carbon. So this planet is very, very not helpful for this because I just have these little tiny planets or plants and they don't give me very much carbon. So I'm going to be, you know, farming for a while to get just a little bit of carbon. <laughs> Look at that. Nothing. I mean, thankfully, there's a lot of these little tiny plants around, but man, I got to farm a lot of them. And I think we need two. So we have enough for one. I believe we need two. I always forget. Uh, yeah, two nanotubes and one jelly. So on uh, extreme difficulty, it's really, really difficult. And you have limitations. Like, look at that. I can only carry 300 cobalt for each uh, spot that it's in. So your inventory fills up way quickly, way quickly compared to normal. So you don't want to... You don't want to pick up too much stuff because then you're like, oh, okay. Oh, God. Now I'm... Let me do this. I need to make batteries. Okay, we need to make batteries. I, that's, a, that's the primary thing we need to do here. That way I don't die. There we go. So now I can do this. Oh, God. Now I'm, I'm messing up. I'm already messing up, you guys. There. There we go. Oh, there's some guy over there. Let's see if I can get a uh, an upgrade out of here. So you, this is usually junk. You can refine this into nanites, but it's not worth it. You're gonna get like four nanites out of that. You get more for opening the container. But you can also, I got yeah, I got nanites out of there. But there's a random chance you will get more than just nanites out of those containers. Sometimes you'll find a random upgrade in there, and that's what I was hoping to get. Oh god. I bet you didn't know you could do that. You run out of carbon. You don't have any fuel for your multi-tool. You can just punch it if you need to. And especially these smaller plants. They don't have a lot of uh, they don't have a lot of health, so I can just knock them out really easy and get all the carbon out of there. I don't need the ferrite dust. I need the carbon. There you go. Plant. There we go, and the rest of it goes in here. Terrain manipulator. Oh, yeah, I need a jelly. So we have a whole bunch of dihydrogen. Those blue crystals that turns into jelly. There we go. Terrain manipulator. Done and done. So now I can unbury this, uh, this thing over here. Right here. And it's always next to that damaged machinery. That smoking uh, machine that's broken right here. It'll always be there. So as long as you keep your eyes peeled for those, you will always find uh, buried technology. And it is randomly, you know, like you can find one random out in, in the world. But the easiest way to identify them, like if you're not paying attention, you can just go look and see if you can find some uh, uh, damaged machinery and it'll be right there. Oh my God, I am. 
Okay, can I make a jelly? I don't think I can. Nope! I don't have enough. So you can also make a life support gel, which is basically like a, a life uh, a healing uh, potion <laughs> in No Man's Sky. But you need to get these blue crystals and carbon. And I think I don't have any carbon. Well, that's great. Technology yep, no carbon. All right, we're good. We're good for now. Let's grab this. I like to to res I like to save my inventory space for all of those because let me look at that. That stack of six of them will give me three hundred thousand. Look at that. So a full stack of nine in extreme mode will give you four hundred thousand. So almost half a million. That's a, definitely a big reason why you want to grab those when you can. Let's do this. Can I make a life support gel? I think I can. There it is. Beautiful. Now we're getting back into normal. And this is the beginning of the uh, fugitive run is always the most difficult because you start on a planet with nothing. And instead of just going to your starter ship, because that would be the easiest way to do this. But instead of doing that, you have to run. You have to get out of there. And so, yeah, it is really difficult. And the whole time we're also looking for either a crashed ship or we're hoping that a trader will land for us. That way we can at least sell him some stuff. It's going to cost you, if you want to buy a brand new one, a brand new ship, it's going to cost you millions and millions. So you have to have a lot of items saved up to sell. Another reason why you want to focus on the high value items like this salvage data. That is going to be your best option for making a lot of money. There's a kick. Up, oh, see? That's why I say. It's, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Whew. I was a little nervous on that one. Oh, my God. I don't have enough to repair my jetpack, so I can't even get out of this hole that I'm in. I need to get some rocks. Do we have any rocks around here? We need to kill this guy. I need your food. Sorry, man. I need your meat. That way I can, uh... Okay, he is freaking... What are you doing? I need the meat. That way I can recharge my health. That's why you do that. Let's, uh, recharge this. There we go. And I know I'm weird. I have to line up everything in a specific order or else it, it drives me crazy. All right. I don't think we have any. We don't have any ferrite dust down here. Are you serious? I'm in a hole that I cannot get out of because I don't have any ferrite dust, huh? Is that ferrite dust? Oh, thank God it is ferrite dust. So this will help me uh, repair my jetpack. Thank God. So that should be... Yep, we're good on that. There we go. Whew. There we go. So now we are... Oh my god. I am running out of everything. And I don't have enough for that. And I don't think we have any... Yeah, there's no carbon down here. So I could grab these subterranean relics. However, when you do... Remember that they only give you 5,000 for them, and they only stack up to three. So your maximum stack is going to give you 15 or 16,000 compared to 468 for a stack of that. That's why I try to know nope. if I don't absolutely need it, like I need the pure ferret. I need these materials in order to make health items and things like that. So I keep those. But other than that... I just get rid of all these low value uh, items because they're just clogging up my inventory. There we go. I need to punch some uh, plants again. Where are my plants at? There you go. Beautiful. There. 
Yeah, because the mining beam, it's not necessary, like it's not required, but it definitely makes your life a lot easier when it's uh, charged up and good to go. So I'm definitely going to be uh, making sure I get enough carbon for this. There we go. Now we're working pretty well. And in extreme mode, you use more fuel. Like you'll notice my laser is going down faster. And it also takes more uh, materials to recharge it. So normally it would take like 50 to recharge it. But in extreme mode, it'll take 75. For example, it's not exact science. It's not exact one to one. But it's that it's along those lines of it takes a little bit more. And so you'll notice, you know, you're running out of materials a lot faster and your uh, mining beam is basically depleting a whole lot faster too. So it's like double whammy. Let's, uh, oh, that moved. Okay. You can get these small con uh, carbon crystals. You can't get the big one because you need an advanced mining laser for that. But the small ones like these, they're okay, and it's the only one you can do. Like the small yellow ones, that that doesn't work. The small blue ones, I mean, dihydrogen, yes. But in general, the only crystals you can get are the small red ones that are from the uh, condensed carbon. Let's see, is that a double? It looks like a double. It looks like there's two smoking piles coming from this. So there might be two. There is! So we might have a, an upgrade, a double upgrade out of this. Let's see. Double upgrade, please. No? Dang it. The nanites. That's fine. That's fine. Let's see what this one does. We got... What do we get? Nothing? Just nanites? Oh, man! I was hoping for an upgrade. Like, maybe radiation protection. That would help out a ton. Because we're on a radiation planet. I'm getting my butt kicked constantly. Buried technology. Oh, and sometimes it, it glitches out. And it's above the surface. It's supposed to be underground. However, uh, No Man's Sky is procedurally generated. So sometimes it just glitches out. Yeah, because it, it doesn't know. It just doesn't register that it's under the ground. Or not under the ground. Whatever the case may be. Um... Nothing around here. Oh, there is a uh, damage machinery over here. Let's just look. Now, I try to go in one direction, like I'll go north, but I'll zigzag around and go, oh, I need to go over here, or over there, just to check it out, make sure. So it's never really in a straight line, per se, just, you know, in a general direction. Radiation protection. Boy. That's uh, copper. We don't need that. Yeah, that's just a machine, but there is a buried uh, technology in here. The other thing you can look for is these little boxes right here. Sometimes they are what's called a buried cache. A buried cache is a random item, just like the uh, damage machinery. It'll give you a random item. Most of the time, that's going to be nanites, but every once in a while, again, you'll get like... Uh, a rare upgrade or uh, like materials like you'll get like cobalt or whatever out of there we need to get some more that there we go we need to get some more carbon so we can do this to get oxygen oh wait scan that we need carbon and we need dihydrogen to make our uh, life support shells. Let's see what we got out of there. I can do this. There we go. All right. Now I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. We definitely, this is a really, so every once in a while you run into a planet that has very, very low quantities of one item. And most of the time it's like, oh, there's not a lot of ferrite dust here. There's a whole bunch of plants or whatever. 
this planet has very little carbon. There's not like a lot of trees around here. It's a lot of rocks and these small little plants and that's it. So that is going to be the problem. Because you need that for your laser and also to make life support shell. And yeah, I'm getting a lot of ferrite dust, but not a lot of carbon. Oof. Not a good planet to start on. So, while I'm recording this, we're still waiting for the next No Man's Sky update. Whatever that happens to be. It is, you know, middle of, uh, or end of November. Oh, jeez. It's almost December now. And in general, we should have gotten some kind of a replay update by now. By Thanksgiving, usually, if you're in, in the United States. So the fact that we have not received anything... I mean, we did get an experimental branch. It's not even a public one yet. We have an experimental, a testing update. Just to make sure there's no bugs in the game. And that's it. Oh, buried cache. Let's see if we can get something out of here. So that tells me either there's uh, problems with the game, like they're having issues updating it or adding something to the game, or they're like, dude, we, uh, we need to milk these replays because uh, every year for the past couple of years, so we've only had replays for three years now, but for the past couple of years, they do a, what's called a replay is they uh, they replay the older expeditions. But we've usually had four or I think four expeditions, a lot of them to replay. This year we haven't had as many. And so there's not a lot to replay and that's the problem, right? It's like, well, we can do a replay, but there's nothing really to replay. So what do we do? So I, I have a feeling my gut is telling me that they're waiting because they're like, dude, we don't got a lot. So we need to wait and then give them replays later on because it needs to last longer. Or, and this is a very small chance that I have my, my heart would love for this to happen. What if they have a massive update and they're having issues with it? Like they planned on pushing it out in November. And there's problems with it, like it's not working on Nintendo Switch, or it's not working on Xbox One or PS4. And they're like, look, we need to push this out for everyone, so we need to work on it. We need to polish it up a little bit more. So we're going to take an extra few weeks to make sure it works right, and then we're going to launch it like in December. It'll be a massive update for the end of the year. And it's just taking longer than usual because they have so many platforms. And I had a few... We all theorize this, I think, in different ways, but I feel like Hello Games, the people who make No Man's Sky, they are, they have been, and they have, they have been, and I think they continue to be a very small team of people. I think there's less than 30 people, less than 40 people, something like that. There's like 30, 40 people working on No Man's Sky. That's not that many. That's not that many. When you think about like other companies, they have hundreds and hundreds of people and Hello Games has like 40, 30, something like that. And they're pumping out updates like every couple of months. And so it was amazing. It was like, dude, this is crazy. I can't even imagine how hard they're working to get all this stuff working. Well, I think they bit off more than they can chew because they said, hey, not only are we going to have a PC version, we're going to have a, an Xbox and a PlayStation version. We're going to add in a Mac version. We're going to add in a Nintendo Switch version. There's all kinds of different versions of No Man's Sky now. With that comes a whole bunch more testing because if, if the game works on PC, it might, doesn't mean it's going to work on Xbox or on PlayStation. Every platform has their own weird thing that they have to make sure works on. You know, they don't, they all, it's like running on different computers, basically. Different processors, different uh, stuff. And so, when you have a whole bunch of uh, platforms, you have to test them all, and that's going to take a lot longer. And I feel like we're running into, we're seeing that now, because this whole year, 2023, all the updates have been either very buggy when they come out so the update comes out and it breaks a whole bunch of stuff so things don't work anymore there's glitches there's bugs there's issues with the game or you see that they are taking a lot longer like for instance this one they're doing they're taking a lot longer to put the updates out like they have to work on it a little extra more because it takes extra time 
So I love Hello Games, but I have a feeling they bit off more than they can chew and they're like, okay, look. It sounds good and it's awesome that we have it on everything that's known to man, but now we have to test it and it's taking so long. It's not, it's almost not worth it because I mean, I don't know the numbers. Who knows how many people play the Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky? How many people play the old Xbox One or the PS4 versions of No Man's Sky? I'm sure that a lot more play the Xbox One and PS4 versions because those were the first ones to, to come out, really. But Nintendo Switch, how many people are playing that? I don't know. I mean, how many people had a PS4 and they, they upgraded to a PS5? And so now they play the PS5 version. I don't know. So I have a feeling that it's taking extra time for that reason. And... Ultimately, I think uh, No Man's Sky, they're stacking so many updates, so much content onto the game itself that now it's getting so large. It's not performing like it used to. Like the performance is a little bit lower compared to like 2018 No Man's Sky or 2019 No Man's Sky. You know, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll keep that for now. Uh, so is it worth it to update these older consoles or should they say, hey, look, as of, you know, 2024, that is locked away. We're not going to put any more updates out on the Switch and the Nintendo or the uh, Xbox One version and PS4 versions. Any old school consoles, we cannot add any more content to because they just can't handle it. It takes too much work to uh, to bend it and make sure it works properly. We have to sacrifice some stuff. Like in the case of a Nintendo Switch, they had to cut some stuff out to make sure it, uh, No Man's Sky would work on Nintendo Switch. So instead of sacrificing all this stuff, let's just cut it off and say, look, this is it. We're not gonna get rid of the game. You can still play it and everything like that, but you're not getting any more new updates because the uh, consoles just can't handle it. Where, you know, all the stuff we want to add to this game is just too large or too big or too powerful. Whatever you want to call it for the game itself. I think I'm going to die. Radiation protection. Okay. Don't move. If you move, it takes up your life support. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to figure out the closest way to get dihydrogen because I need this for life support gels. And you don't want to move. Using your jetpack will do it. Just moving in general does it. So that should work. There we go. Whew. Man, I am getting destroyed on this fugitive run you guys it is because i'm probably chatting too much i'm just talking i'm rambling talking about uh, the future of no man's sky and and to be clear to be crystal clear i have no idea maybe there's nothing wrong maybe this is all part of the plan it doesn't feel like it's part of the plan but maybe this is their their plan the entire time like oh yeah we knew back in uh you know in june that we were gonna push out an update in december you know, we are we always plan this. I have no idea. It doesn't feel like it though, because it's not like all the updates, all the patches, all the stuff that we've seen this year has been outside of the normal stuff. Like the, for the past five years, we've seen this is what happens. They announce it, boom, every couple of months. It might take three months, but that's a rare occasion. And then this year, 2023, it was like, ah, eh, they're all taking a lot longer and they're all a lot more buggy. Like, there was always bugs in, like, 2020 and 2022, 2019. You, they put out an update, and there's some bugs here and there. And they, they go through, and they patch it up, and they fix it. But for the most part, the game itself worked. I didn't see as many uh, complaints, many people saying, Oh, my game is totally busted. Like, I can't even play the game anymore. I've, I've heard that sentiment more this year than any other year before. Now, that is anecdotal. I didn't take a survey. I don't know how many people are doing are saying that. And at the same time, maybe that's just because more people are playing No Man's Sky. So therefore there's more problems. I don't know, but it just doesn't feel like it's the 
normal year. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe you know what? If we're gonna we're gonna be just throwing out speculation, maybe they are working because we know that they're working on another game. Maybe that game is getting really close to launch, and so they've been extra distracted this year. They're like, look, we have this other game. We're almost there. So instead of working on No Man's Sky fully. We're going to work on it a little bit, make sure we're trying to do as much as we can, but our focus is actually on this other game because it's almost there. It's like right there, almost at the finish line. We are so close. We just want to get it done. We need to polish up and get it ready. Maybe that's what it is, and they're getting ready to announce it. It could be like a 2024 game. Like, oh, we're ready to go. 2024 is when we launch this brand new game, whatever it happens to be. Who knows? If we're speculating, that could be it. I don't think so but maybe i think it's more in line with for me personally it's like hey look we only have 30 guys here 30 guys and gals 30 people working on no man's sky and we have way too much to to keep track of now because we have the mac version the pc version the ps4 ps5 xbox one xbox series x uh switch version you know the vr version it's like holy cow and it gets to a point where you're like, okay, we fixed this thing in uh, the Xbox version, but that broke the PS4 version. What the crap? And so uh, it's one of those things where that's why, you know, that's a, one reason why there are so many people working at uh, a random, like on Ubisoft or on the, uh, you know, at EA or whatever, any big developer, Rockstar. The reason why they have a lot of people is, number one, they can afford it. They're selling billions of copies of video games. But number two, they need a whole set of, you know, a group of people just to test the PS4 version, the PS5 version, the Switch version, whatever. And so they know, oh, we need 20 people just for that version. And then, you know, so we have 200 people that are devoted just to testing the game on the different versions on the different platforms. That's not really feasible at No Man's Sky, at Hello Games. They can't really do that. Anything here? Not seeing anything there. That's fine. So, yeah. If, if I had to speculate, that's probably in my, in my brain, in my mind, that is the reasonable explanation is, oh, they're just taking longer because it's taking a little bit longer to do the updates. And they, uh... They have only like, I think there's only been two or three expedition expeditions this year. And so you only have two or three to replay. That's not a lot of content. So you want to wait till the last minute. That way it stretches out longer. Cause if you put out a, a replay, let's just say, oh God, that's what it was. Okay. If you, uh, if you have two expeditions and you put it out in November, you're going to be done by December. It'll only last about a month or two. Maybe, maybe a month. I mean, a week or two. <laughs> so it's not going to last that long. You know, giggity. That's what she said. But if you put it out in uh, December, it'll last at least until January. It'll give you a month <laughs> to kind of uh, take a little bit of a break. So, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how it works. I've never been to Hello Games. I don't talk to anyone from Hello Games. And so who knows what's going on there? It's just everything feels out of place. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we're going to see. I, my, <laughs> if I had my dream scenario, if, if you asked me, hey, Jason, what would be the perfect scenario for No Man's Sky, Sean Murray, Hello Games, whatever? I would say they have been waiting because... The Game Awards are on December 7th. They have a major trailer or an announcement at the Game Awards that they want to share with everybody. And instead of uh, working on No Man's Sky, they're like, look, we have this, we're ready to go, but we need to make sure our trailer for the Game Awards is perfect. Or we need to make sure that, uh, that our announcement is ready to go and we can share more stuff at the game awards so we're gonna put the no man's sky update on pause just for a little bit and we're gonna announce our new game whatever that happens to be we're gonna announce that at the game awards and the uh, no man's sky update is gonna go up the same week 
or maybe they're announcing a brand new like they're gonna announce a massive massive update to no man's sky like this is gonna be uh one of those old school announcements like if you've uh followed no man's sky for a while you know that they used to back in 2017 2018 they used to announce their updates because there was only one per year one per year with like in a 20 i mean one major update per year so in 2018 they had an update called the next update it was a massive update and it was coming you know it brought uh, no man's sky third person view all the stuff it changed it added a lot to the game but they announced it ahead of time they didn't just like do the the randomized oh an emoji from sean murray and that's it no they announced it and they were doing interviews and like they went on ign and they were just talking about how the next update was gonna bring the game to to xbox it was gonna add a whole bunch of features that everyone was asking for and they were showing off a little bit and they did they did the same thing in uh, 2018 with the or 2019 with the beyond update maybe they're gonna go back to that original format of hey look we're gonna have a big announcement and the update's not gonna be out now but it'll come out in like in a month or two so it'll come out in january but we want to tell you about it at the game awards we're gonna have a trailer for it we're gonna show you and it's gonna be a massive overhaul of the game there's gonna be huge changes maybe that's the route they're going i mean there's a, a whole bunch of different things going off in my brain and i'm kind of rambling but yeah that is definitely i mean is it possible yes if i if i had to say if it was likely or not probably not likely at all i have a feeling that they they have their uh their way they do things they they got in a pattern of hey we do it on emoji sean murray tweets out an emoji and then we put out a little a medium to small sized update every couple of months instead of making everyone wait a year or eight months like it was a long wait between the next update in 28 or yeah 2018 between that one and the beyond update in 2019 it was eight months we had to wait there was nothing no new content no new anything for eight months like we had a trailer and we kind of got teased a little bit but we didn't have any new anything for eight months and now granted the beyond update was huge and it was a big changer it changed the anomaly and all that kind of stuff but i don't think they want to do that anymore because i feel like the game is constantly uh has players coming back because they're adding small snippets small little things every couple of months so it keeps the game interesting and fresh. People come back every couple of months instead of once a year or whatever. And I feel like they like that rather than the one year, once a year thing. So yeah, is it possible? Sure. Is it likely? No. I'd say most likely it is just replays and they're waiting because there's not a lot of replays. The, uh, and that's like 90% chance. I would say it's a 70 or 60% chance that they have a huge update and they're having issues with it on the back end. And that's what's taking so long is that they're trying to figure out how to make it work on all these platforms. And so it's taking extra time to polish up this really big update that they have coming out in December now. That's like a 60% chance, maybe 50, you know, 50, 50 and then you know even lower than that is going to be hey they announced their new game that's like a 20 percent chance maybe in my head or they're going to go back to the original like oh we're just going to announce an update it's going to be once a year again that's like a five percent chance i don't think that's very likely at all so yeah i mean it might be a better process i think because if you have a year to do an update that means you can really polish it you can make sure it works because every couple of months that's really hard you have to work really hard really fast in order to push out an update every couple of months if you have a if you know you have a year to to make sure it's all together make sure it's polished make sure it's running correctly it's not introducing any more additional bugs to the game it's not crashing these older platforms that's probably way easier for the team to get through because you're like oh, okay but on the flip side of that, if you wait a year, that means everyone's going to expect it to be even larger. Like, 
if they were if they make you wait a year and then they come out with the uh the echoes update or the sentinel update people will say i mean yeah it's a, an update but it's kind of small and it took a year to do this <laughs> So it has to be a pretty beefy, massive update if you're going to wait a year to do it. So that's the other side of that coin. I mean, do they have enough content to make a huge, massive update? I don't know. I don't know what their plan is for No Man's Sky. I know they've been surprising me for the la last couple of years now. Last couple of years, I keep thinking, oh, they got nothing else. I mean, what else can they add? There's like, we have everything we need, right? Like, I can't imagine anything else. And then they come up with something and I'm like, holy cow how that's crazy and they keep doing that so yeah they probably do know anyway i've been rambling and uh 21 minutes away from my ship i have not been going in a straight line obviously because we've been going for oh god 45 are you serious see i lose track of time whenever we do these kind of uh these kind of videos because I just ramble on and talk about my thoughts. It's almost like therapy, you guys. So thank you for everyone tuning in and hanging out with me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. We will continue this. You know, again, if there's a massive update that changes the game completely, then uh, yeah, we might need to abandon this. Oh my. Stop. Holy crap. You know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna come down here. I'm not going to try to go up that hill again. Jesus, I almost died going up that thing. All right, yeah, if the, if the update massively changes the game, then I will definitely abandon this. But if not, if it's just replays, we'll just continue on. So hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did, hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time.